we have a bunch of questions, Max. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so let's start with, uh, um, once again, I'm just, just scrolling up. Uh, Narasimhan Parashram is asking, um, is the use of ready-made masala powder is so rampant in our daily cooking? Um, but the perfectionists insist on making their own fresh masala powder. Uh, does this matter to one's taste buds? Actually, yes. Um, and it, again, it's yes, it's partly yes. It's also, it's also because it depends upon how much your taste buds are, um, you know, receptive to this as well. Because, you know, for years and years, if you're just not used to it, then it'll taste completely weird. But it's, it's very simple. Um, and you could do, anyone could do this right now, is that I'm sure we all have like coriander seeds or something at home, right? So you also have an MDH uh, coriander uh, powder uh, sitting in your pantry. Take some coriander seeds, toast them lightly, and then, you know, uh, put it into a coffee grinder or a mixie and give it a quick grind. Uh, it won't be as fine as the, uh, the, your MDH masala, but the flavor that you will get will be so much different. And <clears throat> one of the things, uh, uh, and, and, and one of the things also is, is for example, is hing, right? Um, the hing, which we all get is that white dabba, um, that powdery thing. That's, uh, I, I forgot that, that it starts with the K, the company. Um, yeah, the LG one, LG, right? that's, LG, that's the one we, we get. And that's in the powder. But if you um, somehow get your hand on uh, the root itself and you kind of grate a bit of it, you will see the burst of flavor. Like, how much, like a, maybe an entire tablespoon of that powdered LG will give you how much, you know, grating a small a couple of uh, fronds of true, um, the root will give you. And so it's, it's, a, it's a game changer any day. Um, and it doesn't take too much time. So for example, garam masala, right? If you think about garam masala, you have um, cumin, you have coriander, you have a little bit of fennel, you have some clove in there, uh, you have some ajwain, some black pepper. These are things are, which are very these are not fancy things. It's not like Shah Jira or, you know, like star anise, which you don't have in your cabinet. These are five, six things you have in your cabinet almost every day. So quickly just toasting them for a couple of minutes, grinding them. The same sad chole that you've been making, you th- uh, that you, you've been eating will be elevated to a completely different flavor. Uh, flavor. Also, like, for example, uh, in the in the South, right? For sambar, the archivita sambar is a very uh, popular thing, and uh, and it's it's because it's in the name. You're freshly grinding what are you doing? So you 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 know you're grinding it right then and there, and that's why that sambar is a lot more flavorful than an MTR uh, packet of sambar powder that you bought uh, to make it. So it's 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 a it's it's light and day and any damage. You, you should try it out. Not everyone has the time. So what you could probably do is you can make your own garam masala in small batches, keep it for, make it on the weekend, use it through the week. But yeah, do try it and you'll never touch that packet of MDH garam masala again. Right. Uh, so Kunal, ha- uh, Kunal Vaidya has a couple of questions. Um, was the entire MSG demonization about the, about the keeping out of the tastier option and protecting old methods? Or does it have any actual problems too? Uh, Uncle Roger on YouTube and Facebook uh, loves MSG. And uh, for the record, I love MSG. And I don't think MSG is wrong. In fact, there's more MSG in one packet of lace than a, in, a, in a tub of noodles. Exactly. And, and, and like I said, right, you, ha- you, have, glu- you have glutamates in tomatoes. We, we, eat, we go through tons of tomatoes in all our Indian cooking, right? If you're going to um, like a restaurant and you're having any of these gravies, they are rich in tomato because tomato is what giving you that meaty flavor. And the, uh, there, there are document. I mean, if you go to YouTube, you'll find a few documentaries as well. I think there's one on Netflix. Um, I'm not sure it's still there around. And it's, it's just about how in the early seventies and all that you had cooks from Japan and China, you know, who were coming into San Francisco and setting up kitchens. And that's when uh, they saw people going in droves to these restaurants and kind of abandoning all these other uh, cuisines. So, uh, Italian, uh, you know, restaurants or you know, other American fare, they were kind of seeing empty, uh, uh, empty tables versus you had lines outside these San Francisco kitchens where you had all these chefs coming in from China and Japan. And that's where there was this huge thing back then to kind of demonize it saying, uh, and then you would have doctors also kind of, you know, giving these, um, uh, these kind of paid um, things where they would say, yeah, it causes this because, you know, we tested five people and five people had heart attack. 
um, you know, so you, you can make, you can make whatever uh, statistic you want if your sample size is carefully picked out. And that's what caused that whole demonization. And even back, even in India also, right? Uh, if you grew up in the early 90s, you would hear a lot of the, the MSG causes, heart attacks and things like that, because it was this advent of Maggie. And uh, there was a huge influx of these Chinese restaurants that sprung up everywhere that then like a similar narrative started flowing through that, you know, MSG causes heart attacks. But again, if you just look at it from, a, from the chemical part of it, it is monosodium glutamate. And you have glutamates that are in, like if you're eating mushrooms, mushrooms have a huge amount of MSG. Um, Ajinomoto is just a powder form that you can add it some, somewhere else, but mushrooms have MSG. You've been eating mushrooms a lot. Um, seaweed um, has a lot of MSG in it. Um, and you know you see, you see people, so you, want, you go eat sushi and it's wrapped up in seaweed and so on. That's all MSG, but just that when it's in the powdered Ajinomoto kind of uh, vial, then you want to kind of demonize it. Kind of, but again, I, I'm not here to kind of you know like be an evangelist for MSG, though I am in in ways. Um, and a lot of my videos, you will see MSG is used. Um, uh, so, for example, uh, one of the things I will use a lot is in t uh, onions, right? So caramelizing onions. This is one of the things that gets me a lot. Everyone like, oh yeah, caramelize the onions. And then you'll see even Sanjeev uh, uh, Kapoor and all that, like for 10 minutes, caramelizing onions. Onions don't caramelize in 10 minutes. I'm sorry to say, it doesn't happen. Onions caramelize, again, like just we, we just spoke about at what temperature sugars begin to caramelize. Sugars begin to caramelize, you know, at, at a certain temperature. And then, so you need to be on like a medium flame, give it time and slowly the sugars in your onions will caramelize and kind of break down. It doesn't happen in 10 minutes. However, if you do want to speed up that, one of the things you can actually use is baking soda, right? And same, same thing like we spoke on in the, in the potato one, it, the pectin, uh, baking soda breaks down the pectin and then that kind of speeds up your caramelization. So another thing also people have, just, and the reason I brought it up is just like how we say uh, MSG is bad, baking soda is bad. Oh, you know, if you go, if you use baking soda in a cooking, it's bad. Uh, you use it in cakes, you know, you're not demonizing it then, but then when you use it in other dishes, you kind of have problems. Again, you still need to, it it's goes into how much quantity of anything you use, right? Uh, you use like a tablespoon of baking soda and something, then you get that whole acidic flavor in your mouth. It doesn't cause any, you know, uh, it doesn't cause you heart failure, but your taste gets affected. But a pinch of baking soda any day for onions, give it a try. Okay. Um, I think Kunal has a couple of more questions on, um, Kunal is asking, uh, any suggestions on useful kitchen accessory that should actually be more popular? Uh, we had a similar question when, uh, Ashok, uh, Chris Ashok spoke. So if you've got anything else that you'd like to add. Um, I, I'm probably the right, wrong person to ask because I also end up, you know, seeing something and buying a lot of kitchen accessories and then I'm like, this is absolutely a waste. Uh, why, did, why did they even get invented? You know, they look nice when you see them on a video and then you end up buying them. But uh, I will, however, do tell is that everyone um, get two things for sure is a weighing scale and a thermometer, right? Those two things I would say in addition to like knives and um, skillets is that thermometers are, are uh, help you, you know, get temperature. I and mean, if you're baking for sure, you need a thermometer. Uh, but then they, they're really good, especially to understand what temperature your oil is in. And a lot of, ex, uh, a lot of your um, uh, accidents with hot oil occur because of not understanding the temperature of your oil. So get a weighing scale, because like I said, a lot of measurements are good when you are actually doing them in grams versus in cups and uh, so on and get a thermometer. Yeah, but I, yeah, I have a, I have tons of other things, but they're all useless. They look good. In one of those five minute Chinese videos, I go to AliExpress, I buy them, they break, and then I curse myself for being stupid. And then the cycle repeats. Yeah. So in terms of thermometer, uh, thermometers, we've got two types, you know, the probe ones and the surface ones, which... Um, I, again, the, the surface ones is what I would uh, prefer. Um, a, they're also cheaper to get uh, and... Um, you don't have to switch the batteries for a long time. Uh, the probe ones, you know, look a lot cooler nowadays. Uh, also, I don't know, with Corona, those I think might not be available for sale also nowadays, but uh, the, the surface ones are best. Um, you know, 
you just dip it in oil it tells you exactly what temperature oil is also if you want to leave something in it you know that's when for example like we were talking about oil you can leave your 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 uh, surface temperature in your oil and you can see the temperature rising and so you know what it is versus hitting your gun and seeing what the temperature is so uh, also it's a cheaper option run the surface one sorry in the gun the infrared the surface one no that that's oh sorry the opposite <laughs> yeah yeah get the one with the uh, with your needle that you can leave it in something versus uh, going for the gun sorry i got them mixed up in my head yeah it is slightly confusing okay i um any more questions i'm just looking at youtube i don't think there are questions there i think people are just like i'm just going to go they're all going to go buy msg now and <laughs> <laughs> you should yeah it acts adds a lot of and one of the simplest things you do if you ever get msg take like a small pinch put it on the tip of your tongue you will literally like if you've seen dogs drooling that exactly what will happen to you because that whole um, and that's what umami is right umami makes your mouth uh, water and then you get that uh, taste that will exactly happen if you put like a small pinch of msg on the tip of your tongue that's what's going to happen so if it does that that's what you can kind of then picturize that's what it's going to do to your dish as well is that you know it'll be uh, you know mouthful and you you get that chatpata um taste that you get so uh, tejas uh, says that the the hing the peringaima the acidity that we get in dabbas also contain maida or flour maybe yes. it can reduce cost so that also will impact the taste yeah uh, sorry Uh, one more question. Kunal saying uh, says, uh, please share advice, tips, or tricks from the approach you've used, scientific approach you've used. Ah, uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I do post them on Twitter, um, and I, uh, if you uh, recently, I've started putting a lot of uh, small uh, two-minute videos as well. Uh, so you'll see things like I just mentioned, whether you know, like adding baking soda or uh, to onions or potatoes or MSG and. um sometimes i also post uh, videos of chopping uh, especially because you know like if you're using this guy um i post videos of um chop because one of the things and here's where people get wrong is if you have a knife right there are multiple ways to hold a knife you know this is you can hold a knife this way um if you're trying to murder someone you do it this way but one of the ways i and you'll see a lot of there are a lot of videos online is this pencil grip so you hold it like this like a pencil so you're three fingers are down but your index finger and your thumb is what is holding the blade right so it's very much like a pencil now you have more grip versus like this and then it lets you go through your food lot with lot more precision than you were doing this way so it it takes a bit to unlearn uh, if you've been using it uh, this way but do try out the the pencil grip and it helps also there are videos uh please go look at them for especially the most important ones when you're cutting an onion because the onion that has that thin uh layer and the knife can kind of skip over it is 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 what they call the claw method right so you keep your hand on your onion like the claw and your knife is hitting your knuckles so it's hitting your knuckles like this and then you're cutting down on it and your as your onion is getting smaller you kind of curl your hands away so you're always hitting your knuckles and your knife never goes above your knuckles so that you don't cut end up chopping your knuckles so you're always this is how you're going right so you're always on you're using your knuckles as like a guide and then you're going through your uh, you know whatever you're chopping and that's it makes makes it easier because you're using the rocking motion um this part is on the on the board so physics is also helping you and the weight is coming down so again like i was saying earlier you want to do things not because they are cool or something I mean, sometimes yes you it's it's cool um but more in fact because it it makes it reduces your time right you want to get even cuts you want to not use so much effort to having to cut so again if you're cutting like a pumpkin yes you have to use some pressure i get it but for potatoes carrots tomatoes celery all of these you want your knife to do the work and uh, rather not you same thing goes for spinach or all of these so um yeah like i said there's tons of uh, cooking uh, chopping videos and um, as well uh, you can look up look up those and uh, can kind of kind of practice on how you should be you could be cutting which will kind of save your wrists you know in the long run a lot fantastic uh, any other questions people 
Okay. So uh, Kunal wants to add a list of things that uh, Kunal is buying, which includes MSG, baking soda, small chef knife, knife sharpener, surface temperature, and small weighing scale, which I think works. Yes, and I think that that should be all you, that's the basic minimum you should need uh, to start out because you have a lot of these other things and even in knives, there's like so many different knives, you probably don't need them, like a bread knife. I mean, unless you bake a lot at, um, or, you know, you do, you do, you do. but again, a chef knife can also cut, cut through bread as long as it's sharp. Enough. This list is a spatula, uh, you know, a regular spatula, like the one that we make, or the Japanese teppanyaki and the offset spatula to sort of... Yep. Um, yeah. flip over. Slightly better than the dosa therapy, which is, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, get spatulas. And then nowadays, I think uh, you have the silicone ones. Uh, again, people are worried that, you know, oh, silicone, it will kind of melt into my food and so on. Uh, no, they don't. Um, they have uh, the, the silicone is not, you know, what you have in your eraser or something that for it to melt uh, onto your pan. Um, I've even made dosas using uh, a silicone uh, thing when I've not been able to find the other one. But yeah, they do have a pretty high uh, resistance for heat. And again, they're easy to clean uh, and, you know, food doesn't stick to them. So yeah, you could give those uh, a try as well. If not, you know, use wooden. Because the thing with wooden spatulas and so is that because they're wood over a period of time, um, either they, you know, you, they'll start getting... Um, chipping away and then your food particles all start getting stuck in that. So it makes it a lot more difficult to clean and sanitize and so on. And then you actually have to sanitize your wooden spatulas every now and then um, versus, you know, something else. So that's also one of the things to think about. Wooden spatulas look really good if you're taking a picture on Instagram, uh, but then they also need a lot of caring um, than anything else. Oh yeah. And I would say get a, get a good cutting board, get a big cutting board, because that's one of the things I do a lot is I prep everything and that way exactly I know how much I have because a lot of times what will happen, at least if that's, if you are like me is I will see this entire uh, cabbage, I will chop it up and say, you know, I'm going to make something with cabbage. And then I realize, Oh, I only have two onions. I only have even, because when you look at it, I have onions, I have cabbage. I have, I'm going to make something <laughs> when I chop it all up. I have a huge mountain of cabbage. I only have two small onions and now I just not think what else can be done. So, Get a huge, get a bigger chopping board. You have more space. That means you can have everything on there. Onions are here. You can cut your ginger, garlic, mirchi all on this side. Your vegetables go there. Tomatoes, everything can be right there. And then uh, you're done versus, you know, smaller boards or things like that. Again, you can do smaller boards, but then you have to transfer them into other bowls and things like that. But a bigger board for a lazy person like me, you know, you, again, if you were to see any of my videos, you'll know. I just cook off the board. Uh, my mom actually was like, use bowls. They look nicer, you know, <laughs> when you're making a video, but like it's too much work, too much to wash. This way I'm just washing one cutting board at once. Yeah. Also, when you're using board, do what the chefs do. Put a uh, slightly wet towel underneath so it yes. doesn't move around. Yes. A wet towel under the board. It won't move. Otherwise, you'll be cutting. The board will kind of move around and then you lose some digits in your finger as well. <laughs> 